Okay, that's the hair heckle black costume. Yes, it is. And the hair heckle is my own innovation. Uh -huh. I, I use it on the black costume, green, gold, silver at times. But it's an excellent fly. A fly that you can use with the, you know, riffling without a hitch. And you use a turtle knot. You don't use a hitch with this fly because if you throw a hitch behind the head of that fly, you'll tear the deer hair out. Mm -hmm. And what I do is I just put a turtle knot on and that, that fly slides across the top of the water or just underneath the surface making a nice ripple. Mm -hmm. Salmon love it. Yeah. It's been my top uh, big fish fly now in the past couple of years. Wow. 28 pounder and 25 pounder last year. Turtle knot, that's just a different way to... Just a, a different, uh, it's a loop system of tying on your fly. Wow, I believe we, I, yeah, we did, we, sh we showed that in the tackle program uh, one time. Ages ago. Eight, that was our first season, I believe. Show 14. Yeah, <laughs> fountain of knowledge. I have to do something, but... Yeah. Alrighty, well, let's get into it. Here's the list of materials you're gonna need for to tie this fly. The hook is a number 43906B. The thread is yellow 60 monochord and red 60 monochord. The tail is flat silver tinsel. The butt is fluorescent orange and uh, stretched nylon. The body is black angora. The wing is dyed dark brown squirrel tail. The hackle is yellow deer hair and the head is red. And that's everything you're gonna need to tie the hair hackle black kotzaboom. Very good. Thank you. you want me to tie now? You go ahead, I'm gonna shut okay. up the rest of the show. Okay, usually I'll use white thread, but uh, with, where the, 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 the collar is made of yellow deer hair. And uh, if we were to use white or, well, white's not too bad, but a, a dark thread or something like that, you would see it underneath the collared hackle. So you don't, mm -hmm. want to, you don't want to do that. Now we're just gonna tie well back. Now we usually start right up around the head. But what we're gonna do here now is we're just going to, uh, we, get, we need some space to spin our Deer hair up on top, so this is where we're going to start. Now, what we'll do is we'll tie in our tinsel for the tag, cement down. Is that the same hook as the one in our example? Yes, it is. Oh, okay. uh, Maybe a little, bit, a little bit smaller, I think. Yeah. Okay. My opposite sense. You know, you're, you're uh, very observant. Okay, I'm going to spin it and take the twist out, flatten it by stroking it. And I'm going to go down. Now, this particular fly version has an orange, fluorescent orange butt. Now, I, 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 I must add that I don't use a, a fluorescent orange butt on it normally. No. Uh, but I know a fluorescent green butt does well on that style, the black cast boom, the ordinary black cast boom in a way. Mm -hmm. So I said, now, just to, uh, to have something similar, but just a little bit different, I'm going to go with an orange butt. And I like it. I must say, I, I think that's going to be a really hot fly next year. Now what we're going to do is we're going to wrap back and we're going to form a bed for our tag mm -hmm. and our butt. Okay. There we are. Now we just wrap back. Again, we'll go with a half and a half now for our tag and our butt. You don't mind, do you? I have no objections whatsoever. Yeah. Very simple fly. Till you get around to the collar. Well, take your time. Yeah. We're gonna have our show here. Doing the slow motion. You be like the man can. Okay. Now, what we did there is again, we we got an under underbody of of uh, tinsel, so that that negates the the color of the shank showing through the material, and it gives a nice glow to your your butts, right? Especially that fluorescent nylon stretch I've got there. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. There we go. And what we'll do is we'll just wrap that edge to edge and wrap back so far. We don't go all the way back and then we'll come forward again. See how nice and round about the, that butt is? Mm -hmm. We don't have a tail on this one. So we'll just call it the butt. Why is there no tail? It's just that's the pattern, I guess. Just my, my, my pattern. Now, see, Eric Burns, everybody should know Eric Burns. Eric used to be the best fisherman up on the Lower Humber for years and years and years. Eric took the biggest fish every year. And one of fa Eric's favorite flies was the Black Cosmo, but it was done in a different style that was, you know, I have right here, right? Just lift your hands up there so they can see what you're doing. Oh, okay, I'm just... Wool here, he's cutting. Yeah, I'm just trying to... And blow the table, what? <laughs> okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to slip that up underneath. And... And tie it in, right? There 
go. Now I'm just going to try to keep those materials on this side now. I'm going to have to clip some of this off because it's not behaving, right? There we go. You see, that's all getting tied down along the shank. And the reason we do that is it reduces the pull of some materials when mm -hmm. you're fishing, right? You might get a you know a fish that snaps into snaps at the back of the fly and you'll tear up materials this way. The only thing you can do is, is break it. Wow, well, you hit me with it. Yeah. <coughs> okay, now what we're gonna do is lay down some cement again. Cement is an integral part of the fly. If you want to, you know, a fly is no good if it's not durable, right? Correct. You agree? Yes. I mean, some flies are inher inherently fragile because of materials that are used, but I mean, for ordinary flies. Well, I guess there's nothing worse than if you happen to get a pattern that you find is, oh, is successful it, no? for you, and the last thing you want is, uh, you know, after you hook it to a couple of fish or after casting it for a while, it uh, all frayed up and yeah. took them off. Bad, bad scene. Now, Fancy. I will tell you another material that's good on this body, too. So is this just, sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. Is this just like regular wool you can get? No, that's Angora wool. Okay. And the reason I use Angora is because it soaks up water so quickly. Okay. Now, conversely, on a dry fly, I use a lot of Angora, but it soaks up the dry fly dressing well. Uh-huh. See, and also, you can see the nice body it makes, you know? It lays flat, as opposed to the, the worsted wool, wolves and whatever, they, they're all segmented. Yeah. Now, there is a place for that type of wool. Okay. And stone flies. And so where do you get your Angora wool? Uh, I had that. Uh, I'll tell you who gave me that. A good friend of mine, Rocky Shoste. Rocky was uh, was one of the top fishermen here, you know, for mm -hmm. the years. And I saw an article, oh, in the Atlantic Salmon Treasury, written by Fred Clark, and he mentioned that uh, the Corner Brook was a hotbed of fly time, but out in Grand Falls there was one major tire. His name was Rocky Shoste, mm -hmm. and he gave him a lot of kudos for oh, his yeah. work. And Rocky, I guess he's worked for he worked for Bull Otters for years, and he was in the public relations department, mm -hmm. and did a lot of fishing. And in fact, Rocky was one of the ones who first gave me a job as a, as a guide. Oh yeah. Down at Certain Pine Lodge, I'll never forget it. That's Rocky up to nowadays. Oh, he's retired. Oh yeah. Okay, now you're going to see that I've left a, quite a space for my head. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave a, 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 a small portion of right up here, right behind the eye, bare. But I've got a better thread down right here. Okay. okay. What's the reasoning? Now the reason is I got to lay in my my deer here, right? Okay. And you don't want a big, too big a hit out of this. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'll have to stack this up. I'll just give it a little snip. Would you like your stacker? Yes, please. No problem, sir. You're a good fella. Thank you, sir. You're a good fella. There's not many of us left. No. <laughs> Me and Charlie Brown. Yeah. Okay, there we are. Come in. Stealing your line again, boy. Yeah. It's funny the first time. Yeah, I know. It's sort of worn thin. Yeah, that's why I don't do it anymore. I know. Okay, now what we got to do is we're going to stack that again. I'm not, not really even on the, on the tips. stacker too that you used in those different shows. Yeah, it's a, I usually use the, the large aluminum stacker on, on calf tail. Okay. Because okay. it's just bigger material. Yep. Now I'm gonna measure this off. I also showed how you could use the, the hollow portion of a big pen or something like yeah. that. If you, uh, if you didn't have any. Well if you're really stuck, but I use the hollow portion of the big pen mostly for uh, for uh, pushing back deer here, right? When I wrap it on? Oh yeah right. Right? But yeah. you could if you're in a pinch you could use a a pin, hmm. a barrel of a pin, you know? So you just glued the butts, it just cemented the butts, the butts okay. whatever. And you take it in thirds again. One, two, three. Now what I'll do here is I'll, I'll back off and then I'll just cover the stubs. Mm -hmm. I went down once with the close thirds, I'll come back and good. What I'll do now is I'll just whip this off now. You whip that off there. What I've got to do now, John, is on uh, this portion of the fly, you have to do, you have to take care of that head as you normally would. You have three coats. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little drop of lacquer and uh, 
Take a break. Take a break, yeah. All right. How's that sound? See that? With the rotary feature, you can just turn it all the way around. You don't have to take the floor. That is a cool, like I said, a couple of shows ago, and we showed Rob's got a new vice. And we've allowed some sufficient time for the cement to dry. Dry. Whatever. And what's your tip going to be, bud? Okay. The color of that wing, that wing material, it's dyed dark brown squirrel. Okay. What a beautiful color. Now, a lot of the classic salmon flies, the feather wing flies, use bronze mallard. Mm -hmm. And this is what I'm trying to do with my dyeing fox squirrel dark brown. And that has really worked out well for me on a lot of pattern, patterns uh, lately, the past few years. Uh, Lower Humber, Loman, Southwest, all the rivers I fish. That, that particular hair color, mm -hmm. and the boys really love it too. They're starting to really catch on to it too, you know. Let's the boys. It. Yeah, the boys. That's me buddies. <laughs> me buddies. But right. uh, taking a lot of fish, a lot of flies with that, that wing uh, coloration on it. Okay. Yeah. And another, another what, what you can do with uh, another material is uh, beaver guard hairs. It's a nice color too. No, we've never used beaver. Um, we have on trout flies. Have we? Yeah. Yeah, much red and beaver, but uh, the guard hairs of beaver is nice on smaller flies. Yeah, hard to get it in uh, larger sizes. That's a fantastic color too. But dark brown, dyed dark brown squirrel is my favorite winging material. Okay. Overall. Uh, next, if you can get good bear hair, black bear hair. See, uh, bear is a little bit different than squirrel. It has a sheen to it, number one, mm -hmm. and it's a little bit stiff, and the fibers are separated instead of like when you put this on a fly. Mm -hmm. It's matted, right? But with with uh, bear hair, there's individual fibers, much That's like right. much like the uh, the silver cotton when we do, right. or the silver wrap we're going to be doing next week. Ever used polar bear hair? Yes, I have, and it's good really? material. Yeah, I. Uh, Is there? I mean, I know just seeing polar bears. I mean, the hair, the individual. You know, oh yeah, strands of hair are, are huge and and quite coarse. Some it varies. Uh, I've I taught a fly back oh, in the late '70s that I call the fluorescent green stone fly. And that is, uh, the, the evolution of that pattern was the fluorescent green red. But the fluorescent green stone fly, if you remember opening day back in 78, I went out and I made, uh, I walked in amongst a, a bunch of people. And a little Saturday Night Fever, a little out for that. Oh yeah, that. Bit, bit of three, uh, three casts later, and the first two casts didn't get quite over the ledge, but the first cast I got over the ledge, bang. This is okay. I hooked how many fish that day? We've 12. What a fantastic day's fishing. Mm. What river was that in? Southwest. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Down towards Steamville. Yeah. Yeah. Okay.